All right. Morning, family. Wonderful Sunday. Thank you all for coming. Mwape, Munduka, Mwape. Always thank you for hosting us. That's commendable of you. Every time reminding us through social media. And you're welcome, Leonard. You're welcome, Munduka. Get well soon, Leonard. Um, Mwape also, get well soon. There's a flood going around. People are fooled and We wish you a good recovery. Okay. I want to appreciate you all for joining. We appreciate everyone who is joining us every Sunday. Feel free, family, to join us every Sunday, 9.30 a.m. We meet here in this platform. 9.30 a.m. to 11. <clears throat> After 9.30, you will find us here. Welcome. Like I always say, please invite people, especially those on Facebook. Okay, let me just speak into it. Recording in progress. So we are live on Facebook and Zoom. You are free to join us on either of the platform. And I'm thankful that you've joined us. And I'm Share the link. Everyone who has managed to log in, please share your link as much as many times as possible. Invite someone. <clears throat> it's a beautiful Sunday. We need to be to start now. Like I was saying, we, we meet here every Sunday, 9:30, after 9:30 a.m. To, to about 11. We meet just for, for an hour. Please share, share, share before I start. I'm thankful that you're joining us all the time. And I'm sure this is, you're not the same after coming to meet with us after, after twice, three times. This is a very beautiful platform where it's a safe place. A platform where we get to meet and discuss. Please share with someone, share before I begin, share, share, share. Tell someone, let them be part of this discussion. Yeah. I promise you it's going to be awesome. This is one of the few platforms where you come to listen to something which will build you, something which will make you a uh, right citizen of the earth. It's a place where you come to have some, some break from uh, all, all those social, social, social media Significant. You notice every every week, no doubt, is a scandal on social media, and everyone is rushing to that page. But the video so that come and listen to this page. Man, there's a scandal that man has felt, and we need to begin to rebuke the mind of man into the righteous mind which God originally. To come, please. You know, the world is dead. When I say the world is dead, I mean people's minds are dead. People have lost their minds. They will rush in their millions and thousands to go and, and watch a scandal on social media. Please share with your friends for once. Let them come and listen to sobering messages, sobering ways. Let them come and learn the ways of the truth which will bring man to his uh, intended position. Please, I'm waiting for you, share. And uh, those watching me from Facebook, please let me know if um, my, my, my the volume is okay. Someone last Sunday texted that they could not hear me. Please, if you're watching me, be kind to just type if, if I'm audible or not. 
properly so that I know that I'm audible. Okay, as usual, please keep sharing. Yeah, I know I can see the number is increasing. We will begin just now. So, like I was saying, we've got people watching us on Zoom and people watching us on Facebook. If I'm on in Facebook, just text and tell me that I'm audible. Okay. I think we can begin. We have uh, waited long enough. Please keep sharing, like I mentioned. Invite someone when you when you log in. Invite another or invite more people. Don't be disappointed. We we are going to have a good time. My audible folks on Facebook. I, is my voice clear? So I think we will begin. Thank you all for joining again. We love you. We want you to be here. We want to be you to be in this class. We want to help humanity. We want to help each other. Like I'm saying, like, like I said, humans are running to listen to messages, to words, to people who are detrimental to society. They find pride in that. But there is a way which we want to show to you. The sad part is that to compel people to do right. People are bent to do bad. You can't compel them to do right. It's just feeding you every day, feed you every Sunday. Right with. But you won't listen and pain continues. Suffering continues. Because no one wants to listen to what to the beats. Are fortunate in these dispensations because you have the people who are beating arms of truth in your midst. The sad part is you still choose what So the sad part, even for some of men like us, is that we know that we can't compel people to do right. Our business is every Sunday. To beat the drum, sound the alarm. That's what I'm doing today. I'm going to sound the alarm. And uh, to them who have a ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. We have been discussing lately, we've been going through a lot of uh, areas, and I know it's when you stay in class, these areas we have touched are going to be more clear every day. Clearer. So you that's why I always bid you to be in class every Sunday. Be in class, invite someone because it's important. I know you've got religion to attend to. But when we come here, we will come to talk facts. We come to discuss truth. And uh, please, <clears throat> this platform is not there to castigate any other person, it's to help us, it's to help man. Because man is in the position that you can't compare to compare him to do right. But if we can find even two or three or eight or twenty people in the world, that's nice. We know that we have a, a good future ahead of us. But of course, we have this idea called religion. Religion. So it starts. I know people have joined us now. So I was saying you can't compel people to do right. This idea again called religion. We want to talk facts. Like I've been saying lately, no more fables. We need to tell it the way it is. Religion is a very inexpensive psychiatry. Very inexpensive psychiatry in that it doesn't solve anything. 
it just said those things for a while. I'm not saying this because I'm shooting at my job. A patient which even you have as observed. We are we are we are where we are because of many factors. Science, Adamic mind, philosophy, religion included. And you know what has it done? It has just settled things for a little while. But we want to show you the way which sorts out the troubles of humanity. We want to show you, we want to put in a mind in you which is going to save the world. So I'm saying for those who are seeking to know the way, belief is of no use. Not that belief is bad. Not that religion is bad. But for no use, you need to go now to perfection. Go to the next stage. Seeking the truth. If you're seeking to know the word, belief is of no use. Why do I say that? I'm very slow to talk because I want us to hear and listen. Saying belief is of no use because Belief means that you are assuming something that you don't know. Remember, I have come to confirm the truth. I have come to amplify the truth. The truth is, belief simply means assuming something you don't know. <clears throat> On the other hand, seeking truth, like what we're doing here, means that you are unwilling to assume something, anything that you don't know. And we, you must understand this, that belief, like I'm saying, belief means that you're assuming something that you don't know. Belief is actually a consequence of social influence. Why are you doing this? Because my mom said that, or someone told me to do so. The consequence of social influence. It has no existence or significance. There's nothing you believe which exists. You only believe it exists. You only assume it has no existence or significance. Only what you perceive genuinely, when you perceive something genuinely, only the things that you perceive genuinely is what you know. The rest is your imagination. Religion, belief, those are your imagination. The things you perceive genuinely is what you know. The rest is your imagination. But we are here today, you and I, because we know that there is value in humanity, like what is called. To, to keep talking until change is, in, is inevitable, change is inevitable. A human mechanism, human being, that's why I, I speak every day. Because I know there is hope for humanity. The human mechanism is the most sophisticated mechanism on the planet. And whoever can solve man, in, in turn will solve the mysteries. I, I try to help you the past Sundays. Sorry, Mwabe, are you talking to me, to us? Uh, I just wanted to confirm, is it just on Zoom that your camera is off or even on Facebook? Oh, on Zoom the camera is off? Let me see. Maybe I left it off. I'm so sorry. Oh, it was off. I'm sorry. All right. Yes, uh, very clear. Okay. But you can hear me clearly so far, right? Yes. All right. So the human mechanism is the most sophisticated mechanism on the planet. 
and we need to begin to understand these things as you must. That's, that's, that's why I was saying, please, please share this video. I'm here to tell you that everything, and this, and this I'm here to justify the truth, qualify the truth, amplify the truth. Everything that ever happens to you, everything that ever happens to any human being, anything that happens to you, everything that ever happens to you, pain, joy, misery, agony, and ecstasy, even light and darkness, happening within you. These things are happening within you. And we need to understand the state we, we are in. This is the state of affairs. Physical pain. This will help someone who, to understand life. And this, the truth will save you. The truth will make you strong, will make you realize, will make you begin to live the right way. Physical pain is the natural phenomenon. I'm making a contrast between physical pain and mental pain. Physical pain, as it is, is a natural phenomenon. You, you will be walking in the streets and with your feet, suddenly you step on a bottle. It's a natural phenomenon. There's nothing you can do about it. But mental pain is something you do to yourself. That's the point I think. Physical pain is a natural phenomenon. Mental pain is something you do to yourself. Why? Because the way you think or the way you feel is entirely your choice. That's how God created us. Physical pain, of course, there's nothing we can do about it, but your mental pain is something you do to yourself. So the way you think or the way you feel is entirely your choice. The pleasantness of your body and mind is 100% your business, unfortunately. There's no excuses. But not because I say it. That's the way of life. If you want to go and observe life and live life, you will see that there are no excuses. Where your body feels, the pleasantness of your body and mind is 100% your business, unfortunately. I hope this is making sense. And who we are as humanity, because man needs to know himself, man know thyself. Who we are as humanity. It takes time to be where we are at. So it's true that we slowly gather our bodies over a period of time. Just like if you see me, I'm just a piece of earth that I gather. Like both physically and mentally. So if you have to gather so much, Something more fundamental must be there. That's why I'm bidding you to follow this way, where you gather mentally and physically something more fundamental. Because we have been talking about the state we're in now, is the Adamic mind. And the Adamic mind is a dangerous mind. We've been following Adamic mind for our ways. Adamic mind gave us religion. Adamic mind gave us all these sciences, philosophy, and everything. Not that those things are bad, but we have to outgrow them. So, the Adamic mind is dangerous. We can't go on receiving from the Adamic mind. It's the reason we are here, where we are at. Anyone who received a gift from the snake, remember the Adamic mind is Nakash, the snake, the devilish mind. 
is the divider of illusion. Anyone who receives a gift from the snake, from Adam, is always in trouble. We receive this gift of our civilization from Adam, and look where we are at. So the snake, Adam, eats human brains. That's what Adam does. He eats your brains. He'll take you into his uh, learning institutions. By the time you're out, your brain has been replaced by his, uh, uh, his uh, evil brain, evil mind. That's why you now you see people rushing 10,000 to a social media where someone is addressed or where someone is insulted. Because your brains have been eaten by the atomic mind. A snake, Adam, eats human brains. So we need to begin to understand these things and begin to do right. This is what I'm bidding you every Sunday at morning to come to class all the time. Stop receiving from the snake, from the, from the Adamic mind. It will eat your brain. We need to be truthful. And the opposite of being truthful is that you, you stop lying. Lying to yourself, to your brain, to your life. I told you, mental, mental pain or mental, the way your mental mind is, is entirely up to you. Mental pain is something you do to yourself. But physical pain is a natural phenomenon. So we should stop lying to ourselves, stop lying to the world. That, that's why I said no more fables will be, we're going to be talking the, the way it is, the way truth is in these classes, and to them who have, who have an ear to hear, let them hear this. So because when you lie, you know, lying is something which has brought us where we are as human beings, pain and everything. When you are lying, you receive, a, you get, when you get a, 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 a reputation rather on lying, even when you tell the truth, no one will believe you because they are used to hearing your lie. And usually lying is in stages. <clears throat> That's why they say the devil is a liar. Just like a thief is a liar. So if you lie, you will steal. And if someone catch you, you will kill. So these things have got repercussions and consequences. And they, they bring you to a state of mind where you become a reprobate and just evil to humanity. So you should not get into the habit of lying. Because lying is one of is one of the serious charges. Nature. Because the universe is also against lying, if you look at it come to think of it. The universe is also against lying because everything is created by duty. So meaning universe is against lying. The world, our nature, is supposed to be created by the truth. Paul says through the way the world was created. But now what has created our present world is the snake mind, is the devilish mind, is the evil world. So our world is dead. It's not yet created. We need to resurrect our world. So that's what is happening. The universe is against lying because everything is created by truth. A lie is so, a, a, every lie is against the universe. But man must begin to take charge of the universe because the whole creature is waiting for the manifestation of sons of men. <clears throat> and the whole sign of manhood, which every human being, remember this message is to all the four human type, black, white, yellow, and brown. So the whole sign of manhood is to be faithful. Men, man, when we say man, we include every human being, man and woman. The sign that you become a man is when you can be faithful and man up. 
man up for everything, take charge or take responsibility. Because if I'm going to come before the judgment, the truth should be on my side. Remember, no one judges anyone. I can't even judge you. But the truth, the words which I'm speaking now, judges you. So if I'm going to come before the judgment, the truth should be on my side. This is lying because it was, it's against lying because everything in the universe was created by truth, not by lie. So if you bring lie, then you have a problem, you have a spark. You create a world which you have created in which we are in pain, we are dying, we have been lied to, we have no, no, we are not optimistic, no certainty for the future. And those people lie to us about is this okay, it will be okay when we go somewhere. But the Bible says the truth promises you of the life that is that now is and that which is to come. So just like we are where we are at, I was talking about uh, religion and it's all sorts of things like belief, where we are at. It's like the situation we are in is, is like this, folks. No one knew the back. No one knew the truth. Otherwise, we will not. Be, we are not going to be in the situation we are at now. No one knew the truth about the scriptures. So they just so they just made up a little white lie. That's what Adam calls his lies. Little white lie. Created religion, science, and everything. All those. They're just a little white lie because they haven't taken us anywhere. That's why even the Son of Man, Jesus, when he was alive, he, 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 he said, unless your righteousness surpasses the little white lie, you shall not enter. It's not being wrong, that is the problem, because everyone is a sinner. I'm also a sinner. He said, all oh, have sinned. It's not being wrong, that's the problem. Is the ability to repent. That's the problem. I'm making sense. I'm taking my time. I don't want to, to rush. Psalms 101, verse 1. The Psalm of David. Right. I will sing of mercy and judgment. Unto, the, unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will, oh, when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Psalms 101, verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not claim to me. Psalms 101, verse 4. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Psalms 105, I'm sorry, Psalms 101, verse 5. Whoso privily slanders his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that has a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Psalms 101, verse 6. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall save me. Psalms 101, verse 7. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. Remember, I told you the universe hates lies because it was created by truth. Psalms 101, verse 8. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land. That is eminent. The truth is going to wipe us all out. As long as we are, we are following lies. That's why we need to go into perfection. But I may cut off the all, not some, all the wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Psalm 7 verse 10 says, Let yet a little while you will wake up, look for the wicked, you will not find him. But we are talking about us, human beings. There is hope we need to, to change our ways, begin to do right. That's why we are bidding you every time to come to this class this platform and i always tell you that 
It wasn't pity that moved God about man. It was value. Do you know, family, do you know of any creature that is greater than man? Man is the only creature. Man is the only creature that can leave the earth into the atmosphere. That's how great man is. And even is the word man itself, the word man itself means to take charge. So when they say, be a man, that they are telling you to take charge. And you take charge when you stop lying. You tell you that, and you, you begin to man up. The word man means to take charge. So we need man to live by his word, to begin to take charge of this. All these past 6,000 years, the Adamic mind has not taken charge. All they have done is spoiled and destroyed the earth. Folks, I am going to be, to be, to be talking like this all my life. And remember, you don't kill a great mind with a gun. That's why I'm telling you the Adamic world has got it wrong. You can't kill a great mind with a gun. You kill it with a more greater mind than it. Just like today I've come to you with a more greater mind than yours. I'm killing your mind and putting in a great, a, a more, a, an even more greater mind in your brain. So even in this world, the four human beings, black, white, yellow, and brown, the wars which we must be doing are the wars of the mind. We need to dominate each other's minds in truth. Because if you go to a lesser mind with truth, it will succumb and bow down to you. God created four types of human beings so that we can, we can compete in doing right, not in killing each other or suppressing one another. So you can't kill a great mind with a gun. You kill it with a more greater mind than it. Remember the Bible says the word of God is a consuming fire. It consumes your mind. It kills your mind. That's why I'm called this, the S-U-N of man, the son of man. The son is nothing but a ball of fire. Family. No one wrote truth. I'm not saying I'm writing truth. I've come to confirm the truth. No one wrote truth. No one created truth. The fact that you found it first doesn't need you the owner or author of the truth. The things I'm, I'm saying, they are not new. You, someone will be saying them in another place. It doesn't mean they are the owner or just because I'm saying it. I'm not the author. The truth author itself. So no one writes the truth, no one created the truth. The fact that you, you found it first, the fact that someone is saying it first, that makes them the owner or the author of the truth. But we need to create this household. We need to begin to learn. And how are we going to do that? We need to create a learning environment. And the, and the learning environment must be by necessity a peaceful environment. environment. Hope this is making sense. We are going to, to go through a lot of lessons. Please come every Sunday. But the, I, I, we only meet less than an hour every Sunday. But keep coming every Sunday. As you go on, you begin to understand these things. Because you will realize that everything echoes through the Bible, the scriptures, all scripture echoes truth when you begin to understand it. I told you the Bible is not a history book. I'll keep saying that because it's enshrined in us. We feel the Bible is, is, is telling stories about people who live at some place, some history book. Sorry, people on Zoom, are you, uh, are you talking? Yes, uh, the first session for Zoom will be cutting, will be cutting, will be cutting. Uh, so I just urge everyone to log back in using the same credentials once we are logged out to continue with our second session. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. So Zoom, Zoom folks, don't forget to log back in when you're logged out.
and I see you are below that, let me help them come back in. The Zoom people were logged out, as usual. We are using a free Zoom, that's why we're always being logged out. Because uh, we need to, if you, if you want to support this, you are free. You are free to support this. You are free to be a part of this. But of course, you are not forced to be a part of this. So we are using a free Zoom. It keeps cut, check, um, cutting us out. After 40 minutes, then we, we log back in. So bear with us a bit, but we will come back in in one minute. I'm just bringing them back in in one second. Otherwise, you're free to support this household. You're free to be a part of it. You're free to be part of this family. Uh, like you have noticed, it's very profitable. You know, even when you give, when you support this, this household, you're not supporting me. You're not supporting the household. You're supporting yourself. Because when you support this thing, you're going to have a place where you come and listen to this truth. So when you give to the truth, you're actually giving to yourself. And that's why we say, don't give to anything which you feel is not the, is not the truth. So thank you uh, for um, um, Zoom folks, you are back. Please give me the right to, to record. Uh, they've been granted to do so already. Thank you. So we continue. Recording so, in progress. For that so we were saying we need to begin to be understanding the truth. I was saying every scripture equals truth. And the, and, the, and the scripture and the, and the Bible or the scriptures are not history, are not telling a history, are not telling stories of people who are living, who are working. The Bible is prophetic. And when we say the Bible is, is prophetic, we're not talking about goosebumps or talking about things which exist in another realm, so to speak. Prophetic means it's alle they are allegories. They need to be, if there are stories telling, telling, Telling the state of the truth. I told you that uh, the truth stands on its own. No one has encapsulated their truth in any form. Even the Bible, it's just the Jews explaining the absolute truth using their cultural stories and cultural lives. But all those are just echoing the truth, which we, we want to give to you. So, just like when the scriptures say mountains, as you begin to understand these things. It's not a story. It's not talking about physical mountain. Mountains are scriptures echoing each other. Scriptures from different dispensations, just like me. Um, I'm at a mountain, which is echoing the mountain which Christ sat on, a mountain which David sat on, a mountain which Moses sat on. Mountains are scriptures echoing each other. You have to do something different folks to understand these things. I, I, I remember at some point, I even mentioned that in everything happening on earth is, is changing the earth. Just like we had this episode of coronavirus and everyone was scared, we were all thinking we won't wake up tomorrow and it came with, it, 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 with its devastating effects. And that's why we say that now, I say that we have to do something different, unlike we did, because the world before coronavirus is not coming back. Just like the world of Adam is dying, the Adamic mind is dying. Evil people are dying. That's why you see them on social media becoming more evil, and then they'll be consumed in their own evilness. They are dying. We need to resurrect the world with truth. Everything is not coming back. That's why even our governments of the world, the government should save the human being life system. They, they do their part. But the son of man, I'm also doing my part to save you, to know the, the absolute truth. The government should do a lot of things, farming, industry, etc. So what I'm trying to say is that I'm trying to take you into perfection trying to show you that there is no God rather than truth. There is no God rather than truth. 
you cannot produce God rather than the truth. So if you want to see God face to face, you have to come face to face with the best one. So if you've come face to face to me, with me, I'm going to show you God face to face. God is truth. And as long as in humanity, in this world, there is life, there is hope. This world, these wars, diseases, but life is going on, there is hope. We can change. So we need to understand that. And we need to understand that for you to begin to seek the assistance of truth, you need to be in a, in a state of mind where your mind is focused on observing the earth and following truth, not, not uh, following your, 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 your ambitions or your emotions. You seek God. You seek the truth, assistance through patience and prayer. I told you prayer is not a ritual of mumbling words. Prayer is your lifestyle must be a prayer to God. What I'm saying is that, family, we have been mentally dead. And this is showing through our social media, through the world, people killing one another, people hitting one another. There are four types of people thinking they are you know, yellow, Chinese thinking they're better than the, the, the brown, the, the Indians thinking they're better than the black, the Africans thinking they're better than the whites, four types of people. We have been mentally dead. Now the Son of Man has come to awaken you, to raise you up. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Bible reads, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. Neither received neither received it back upon their forehead or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. A dispensation. Verse 5, Revelation 20, verse 5, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years. Were finished. So this, these people came to life, but the others did not come to life. This is the first resurrection. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. The first resurrection family has got to do with the mental and spiritual resurrection. You have to be alive to listen to the word of God. So God wants to give us truth, so but he has to awaken our mind to receive the truth. So the first, the first resurrection has got to do with the mental and physical resurrection. For God to grant us dominion, because that, that's what it is. God means grant our dominion. G O D G grant our O O D dominion. Grant our dominion. So, and of course, the opposite of God, we say, is devil. Devil also, D E V I L. D E V, divisor. I double L, illusions. Divisor of illusions. And these two are minds. Because the creator of everything, the source of life, is truth. And truth has got attributes. Attributes are omnipotent or omniscience. And one of the attributes is God. Grandeur of dominion. Uh, uh, and the, the truth, dominion is power. What gives you power? Knowledge is power. Knowledge is truth. So truth grants you power. Is a grandeur of dominion. So that's what it is. We need to, to, to civilize man to begin to understand what is happening on earth and how we need to emancipate ourselves from the pain which Adam has brought upon us. Because whatever education we are getting from Adam is just some education which works on a physical level. In fact, the education of the world is wickedness. Because the Bible says the whole world lies in wickedness. Not some. The whole world. Wickedness. I've been teaching you these words because we created the English language. I've been showing you these words. The whole world lies in wickedness. The education of the world is wickedness. 
And we said wickedness has got two words to it. Wick, W-I-C-K, and education, wicked. Wick, E-D, education. Wick, W-I-C-K, and E-D, education. So the education of the world is weak education. The word wicked comes from two words, weak and education. You know the weak, W-I-C-K, the weak like in a candle or in a lantern. The weak is that cloth or cotton on a candle, lamp or lantern. That is ignited to produce fire. So, and the weak, the W the W I C K is your brain. It has been ignited by a strange fire, a strange knowledge. So our brain, mind is that weak which is ignited by worldly knowledge. Our mind knowledge is wickedness. Hence the Bible saying the whole world lies in wickedness. And wickedness, wicked education, human education is knowledge that is good to know but it's not making you righteous that's why i say it's good to win. you are you will be a fool not to learn adam's knowledge because it's knowledge that that's good to know but it's not making you righteous but if you want to be righteous you need to come to the sun of man the son of man so this is what is happening this is what we need to begin what we to understand listen and follow the truth mountains uh, scriptures just like open heaven, when the Bible says heaven open, it's not history, it's not literally heaven open there, is the Holy Scriptures open. When the, when the Holy Scriptures open, they bring life. Just like the, the transfiguration. Transfiguration means that Jesus was in common with the words of the three that appeared. Those three are one. And that one, and it is the word of God. My father and I are one. The father is the truth, the word of God. So we are from the same God, and we are supposed to be one. But we are not one because we sinned. We followed Adam's ways. And I told you Adam is a snake, and the snake eats your brains. So there's no three school of thought or four school of thought, white, black, yellow, and brown. No, there is only one source truth and this source and this four group of people white black yellow white black yellow and brown when they come together that is what we call the christ first Corinthians 12 12 for as the body is one and as many members white black yellow and brown and all the members of that one body being men being many are one body, so also is Christ. The problem is, you are believing Adam's library, libraries, Adam's books. I showed you before that, that, that we made the English language, and the English language is a logical language. When you follow Adam's library, when you go into the library, you're going into their lies. Library comes from the, from the word lie. It's a place where you get all the lies you want. It's a place where we, we are putting all these lies which have brought us here in pain, suffering, wars, killing one another, hating one another. It's library, a place where you get all the lies you want. And I showed you before that when you go in, into the library, you realize that 90% of the library is fiction. But it's all lies. Fiction section. And the, the only the 10% of the reference section is just talking about probably wildlife and soil and trees. But the bigger part of the library is fiction. But we're talking about truth, which is God, the truth which has sent me. The truth which sent Jesus. Who sent Jesus? The word of God sent Jesus. The Bible says so. John 1 51. I hope this is making sense. John 1 51. 
And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, you shall see scriptures open, and the angel, the words, the angels of God ascending and descending upon the S-U-N of God. That one is not supposed to be S-O-N, it's S-U-N upon the Son of Man. Heaven is the Holy Scriptures. The kingdom of God is within you. Is you, Christ said that. And the angels are words. Heaven, you shall see, it says that uh, you shall see heaven open, you shall see scriptures open. Angels are words. We discuss about this. We can explain it for the folks who do not understand. Angels are words. Hebrews 1 verse 7. The Bible says, and of the angels he said, who maketh his angels spirits? So follow me. Angels are spirits, and these ministers a flame of fire. Angels are spirits, and sometimes they are a flame of fire. So, what are spirits? Spirits are not beings living in another dimension. Spirits are these. John six sixty three. The Bible says it is the spirit that weakens. Now, so what is this spirit, Jesus? The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. So what we can assume is the word, the truth. So the Bible says, and, uh, 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 and um, uh, it says, uh, we'll go back to our this we were reading for us to understand. We were decoding that John 1 verse 51. Verily I say unto you, very, very I say unto you, hereafter you shall see scriptures open, heaven open, and the angels. Remember, angels are words, they are spirits. This in John 6 63, it is the spirit that we can the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirits. So John 1 51, very, very I say unto you. Hereafter you shall see scriptures open, heaven open, and the words, the angels of God, the words of God, ascending and descending upon the issue of man, upon my mouth. So you begin to understand the truth now. The angels are the words, and they come in form of spoken word. For the word to be visible, it has to be spoken by someone on their tongue. That's why in the Bible, when they're showing the allegories, the prophetic side, the angel comes with a sword. And remember, sword is an acronym for spoken word. S word. Sword. S W O R D. S spoken W R D word. The angels are our words and they come in form of spoken word. The clouds are what sometimes are called words of God too, because they carry moisture, they carry water. Water is, is, is the word of God. Hence, Paul saying we are surrounded by a cloud, so much cloud of witnesses. I believe that should be uh, Hebrews 12. So, uh, that is what it is. Just like sometimes the Bible is the burning bush. The scriptures are burning bush. Folks, knowledge is power. And how do you get power? From God. G-O-D, grantor. God is the grantor of dominion. Dominion is power. God is a giver of power. And God is truth, from truth. So words are the spirits. The words are spirits because the word is the ghost. You can't see it. It only comes alive when someone speaks it on a tongue. The word is the ghost. It's not tangible, in short. So the truth is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Word. The Bible says the Holy Spirit. And remember, the words that I speak, they are, they are spirit. Word is spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Word. Just like lies are the evil ghosts, evil spirits, evil words. John 6, 63 again, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak, 
unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That's why when we say blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, it's blasphemy against truth. Christ said, yeah, I, I, I won't come to judge you. The words that, that I speak, if you disobey them, they will charge you. Matthew 12, 31 says, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto you, unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, against the Spirit, against the truth, against the word, shall not be forgiven unto men. That's why we have been blaspheming the word in all our dispensation and see where we are at as humanity in pain, dying, corona, corona, wars, hatred. Because we blaspheme against the truth. Now we need to make amends. That's why the Son of Man comes in every dispensation to show you that. Hebrews 1, let's finish up this understanding of that part. Hebrews 1, verse 1 says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in the past unto the Father by the prophets. Ah, in these last days spoken okay, unto us by his son. When you go into the, the translation, King James Version puts his son, his, the word his, when you look at it, it's uh, in iteration. It's uh, lying down like that. When you see words that are looking like that in, in literature, it means they were added to try and make sense to the statement. But from the original writing, it says, has in these last days spoken unto us by, by son. Remember, who son truth. See? By truth. The, the God is speaking to us through the truth. That, that's why I say, if you want to see God, you have to, you have to read scriptures. If, if you want to speak to God, read the scriptures. Spoken to us by, by son, by truth, whom he has appointed here. Of all things. The truth is what is going to take over the earth. That's why you see if you misbehave, you are in pain and trouble. It judges you. By whom also he, he made the world. By the word, Paul said the world were created. Hebrews 11. 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. If, if you want to, to see God in person, truth is God. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself paid our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Verse 4, being made so much better than the angels. Remember, when the Son of Man comes, he becomes better than the preceding angels because he has all those angels in his brain plus the experience he has now. That's why even Christ, before he left, he said, there is one who's going to come. When he comes, when you listen to him, he is going to show you greater things than I have done also myself. It's because every time the issue of God comes, is better than the, the previous. Because he inherits all of them. So if he says that uh, uh, um, being made so much is so better than the angels, as they have by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Verse 5. For unto which of the angels, because remember I told you angels are not human beings, they are words. For unto which of the angels said thee at any time, thou art my son. No, angels are not sons, they are not people. This day have I begotten thee, and again I will be, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a, a son. Verse 6. And again, sorry, yes, verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world. He said, and let all the angels worship him. Would let all the angels of God worship him. I told you what the word worship means. Worship is two words. Worship is, is carrying the word. Worship. Shipping. Worshipping. Like, like now, I'm, I'm a ship. I'm a vessel carrying the word. So I'm worshipping God. I'm worshipping the word. Just like the, the ship, a ship which carries cargo is called a cargo ship. And the ship which carries word, which is the body, the, 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 the blood, 
the, the flesh and blood, the vesture dipped in blood, which is the body, is called the word shape. That's why I say your body is a word shape. It should be a worship to God, worshiping to God. So let all the angels, let all the words, words worship him, carry him. And of the angels, he said, he who maketh his angels spirits. And remember, spirits, the words that I speak, they are spirits. Angels are words. And this means that a flame of fire. Verse 8, but unto the Son, he said, unto the S-U-N, he says, thy throne, O God. It was said, you are gods, unto whom the word came on the tongue. Forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Verse 9, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath appointed thee with the oil, has, has anointed thee with the, with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Verse 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. Verse 11. They shall perish, but thou remainest, truth remainest, and they shall wax old as those. A garment. Verse 12. And as the verse charge, shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Verse 13, but to which, but to which of the angels say thee at any time, sit on my right hand, until I make the enemy thy footstool. Verse 14, and they, the angels, are they not ministering spirits? Their words set forth to minister for them whose who shall be held of, of, of salvation. Angels were stars that shined in darkness. Stars, words, truth, shining in darkness means uh, ignorance. We all depend on truth. And living outside truth has dire consequences. That's where we are in where we are at. When you live outside truth, it comes with a premium, consequences, dire consequences. As we have learned after 6,000 years of living outside truth with Adam, with the Adamic mind. But when the SUN rises, you can't find darkness. As I'm rising, showing you the truth, darkness is being removed. So the Bible says, brightness of his glory, he shall destroy the wicked with the brightness of his glory. Brightness of his words. A light bulb glorifies light. I glorify truth. That's what I do as a SUN of man. I amplify truth. I am not the author, but I glorify it by telling it, explaining it the way it should be explained to you. So we need to understand that. The angels are the everlasting stars, everlasting truth. The Bible is a book within books, a will within a will. It's, it's uh, amplifying or it's reflecting the truth. So the Bible says, he made him a little better than the angels because angels only add a fraction of truth. So when he comes, in, he, he inherits all the truth. As you end, the son of man inherits all these fractions. Truth after he, has, he eats the book. So he is made a little better than the angels because angels only are the fraction of truth. But when the Son of Man comes, he inherits all these fractions of truth after he eats the book. I showed you that the scriptures were not written to you, for you. The scriptures were written for the SUN of man. Ezekiel Osea was, was one of them, Ezekiel was one of them, and they were told by God, eat the book. And after you eat, go and tell the world. Just like I'm doing. I, I've, I've eaten the book. And I'm coming to tell you. So, so when they say, made, it little, made better than the angels, it's because angels only are the fraction of truth. Now, the Son of Man inherits all these fractions of, of truth after he eats the book. And the word becomes flesh. So the Bible says, first begotten, he is the first begotten of both natural and spiritual mind. Angels worship him. When the Bible says the angels worship him, it means the angels bear witness of him. The words, the truth bears witness of, of the issue of man. 
flame do fire dele induz sementes, means the same thing. The scriptures are the burning bush. How this is making sense? At 7:30, you realize that the scriptures are a burning bush. Even the allegory which is in Moses, Acts 7, 30 says, and when 40 years were expired, of course, 30 is his vexation, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire. He maketh angels flame of fire. The word, the truth, in a bush. Scriptures come in the bush on pages made from a tree. The scripture is embedded in a bush, paper from a tree in the bush. My angels, just like I'm, when I'm speaking to you, my angels are the words that come out of my mouth. And they come as I speak. They come with a sweat. They, they come as spoken word, sweat. The Bible says, in the volume of the book, remember, burning bush is paper from tree in the bush. Scriptures are in the volume of the book. The Bible says, in the volume of the book, I come, truth comes. Psalms 40, verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, in the burning bush, it is written of me. Hebrews 10, 7. Then said, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. I hope this is for for those of us who logged in via Zoom, uh, it will be end. The second session will be coming to an end in in less than ten minutes. All right, then let me pause a bit. I want you folks who are listening from Zoom to summarize a bit before I continue. Mwape, you can begin. Audible. Hello? Hello, am I audible now? Very audible. We can hear you even on Facebook. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'll just run through uh, what I've actually come to appreciate personally uh, mm -hmm. from today's uh, teaching. First of all, by um, uh, igniting our thoughts with the words to say pain comes in two categories. There's physical pain and there's mental pain. So by definition, you said physical pain is natural. <clears throat> physical pain comes is, is, is a natural phenomenon, while mental pain is somehow uh, self-inflicting. Uh, mental pain is something that you allow to happen to yourself, but it's very, sometimes when it comes to the physical pain, we rarely get to have full control of what should or should not happen to us. And uh, <clears throat> uh, you said, uh, as people, as time passes, we get to we get to accumulate, or we can, we get to gather our bodies through the consumption of the food that we eat. And uh, as we gather these bodies, we get to the truth gets to dwell within these bodies. And also, you also mentioned an aspect of saying to say. We we need we ought to be truthful with ourselves, and we we should stop lying to ourselves. And uh, this is uh, um, was in line in the concept you said uh, the universe was created out of the truth, and hence anything that any form of lying is tatama, is um, in direct opposition to the entire universe. So whoever lies to himself or lies to anybody is making an enemy of the the universe and uh, the uh, the other aspect that i also appreciated was the fact that um, having understood that the universe create is was created out of truth and therefore truth being uh an attribute of god and you said uh we do not judge ourselves the truth gets to judge us out of everything that we do so uh we can be interacting as individuals you and i but when you speak the word which is truth it is not you judging me but it is 
the truth that you've spoken that judges me. So that is also another attribute that I really appreciate it. And also speaking on the same aspect of truth, we say, uh, <clears throat> you did emphasize to say that uh, truth being an attribute of God, and we know that the, 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 the abbreviation God is, uh, stands for grant of dominion. And hence, whoever seeketh, seeketh to have that power needs to come from God. And God is the only one who can grant you that power. And uh, having power means having the truth. And uh, therefore, whoever has the truth has the power. And um, yeah, and uh, you can only do that also by carrying, by being a worshiper of God. You can only have power if you're a worshiper of God. And uh, you broke, you had broken, broken down the, the meaning of um, the worship of God by saying, worship is, um, is a conjecture word. It's a word made out of two words. There's a war, there's, there's, uh, there's ship and word put together. So whoever has, whoever claims to be a worshiper of God needs to be a carrier of the word. And, uh, we also understand that the word, with the words are spirits. So, yeah, I think in a nutshell, this is what I've appreciated from uh, today's teaching. Thank you. Awesome. That's very, very elaborate. Thank you very much, Mr. It's concise. That it is what it is. Because if you have anything to say, you can talk to us even after this session. The phone number is on top of the video. This video is going to be, it is going to remain on Facebook and it will be on YouTube forever. So thank you very much, Mate, for that. Anyone from Zoom wants to add something on what Mate has said? You are free. I know today I'm alone, my mom, is not feeling well. She's listening in from arrest. But if you wish to say a word or two, you are free also. Uh, thank you so much, Rev. Um, maybe I'll just add on from what Brother uh, Mape um, spoke, probably I'll just add on a little bit before it cuts. Um, of course, like he already mentioned, you began by admonishing us that uh, what happens to us mentally is, is primarily our, our doing, that mental pain is the pleasantness of our mind and body is 100% our business. You showed us that we are, we are who we are cumulatively uh, by what we've gathered, both physically and mentally. And if we have to gather so much, something more fundamental should be there. You showed us how dangerous the Adamic mind is, that the Adamic mind is dangerous and we have to move from uh, the Adamic mind to perfection, that what we've learned so far from Adam um, is not necessarily bad, but we have to move from there to perfection because dwelling there and leaving the truth aside has brought death. And you've shown us that, you've shown us that according to Genesis, uh, uh, the snake being a symbol of Adam, um, Nakash is what caused trouble because it eats at our brain. And I think this reminded me of another scripture you showed us where the Bible says that he's going to bruise your head. And this shows that, that what we have, what so far has been a fight um, and has brought about wickedness is through our minds. We are, we are fed wicked, wicked ways through our brain. And, and, and when you showed us that that's what the Bible says when it says it shall bruise your head. And so you said we need to be truthful. We need to move from, from Adamic minds to the truth. We need to get to a point where um, we, we begin to believe uh, the truth. And so you showed us, you showed us also that um, the whole sign of man is when you, the whole sign of, of, uh, of responsibility is living by the truth and being faithful. And if, and you also showed us that um, 
we can only get there if our righteousness surpasses them all. Like what Christ said, that unless your righteousness surpasses them, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You also showed us that it is not being wrong that is the problem. It is not being wrong that is the problem. It is the ability to repent. Yeah, and you also showed us that it was it, it was not pity that moved God about man, but it was value. So the value that God placed on man is what made is what moved God to be concerned about man. And it reminded me of the scripture that says, Who is man that you're so mindful of him? And you also showed that that the concept of of being a man means to take charge, take charge of your life and we lost the people on Zoom, but that was profound summary from them. Thank you very much, folks, for listening. If, if you have anything to say, you are free to say something. But we should be winding up soon, too. We hope you have enjoyed this. And please do join us every Sunday we are here. Us to understand these things. I I would like to thank you for having joined us. It was a pleasure having you. And please come every Sunday 9.30. We are only here less than an hour, as you have noticed. We don't want to take all the time. Pick up something, go and ponder about it, come back, ask questions, come on, learn more. And if you wish to support this group, if you wish to join this group, you are free. And like I told you before, when, you, when you're supporting this group, you're supporting yourself. Because you will come back to this place and enjoy this truth. You love the world. You love all you know, you're all black, white, yellow, brown, you're free. This is your house. This is your house. Please join us next Sunday. Thank you very much. <laughs>